Good afternoon everyone. Uh, this is Shomodip. I am currently working at Red Hat. Uh, today my topic is developer experience and backstage. Uh, I am currently working at Red Hat for the last, last three years and priorly I was in like few other organization I work at a teaching assistant and my I mostly work on the web cloud and I have few journals on blockchain as well. So yeah, that's a small introduction about me. So let's start with the today's topic. Uh, this is mostly a session for the like very big beginner. If you have the knowledge on uh, backstage, that is good because in this session I'll mostly talk about that what is backstage and like what is basically developer experience and we'll discuss about few of the tools of developer experience and backstage is one of that. So we'll have a look on that how that tool works. And if you have prior knowledge on backstage, then this it will be like a good uh, like recap for you. Okay, so I'll start. Uh, these are today's overview of the session that we'll talk about the uh, silo mentality, fragmented development environment, what is uh, developer experience, what is DX. Then I'll talk about few of the developer experience tools and we'll definitely talk about backstage and at, at the end we'll see few of the demo about backstage. So th that how backstage works, how what are the templates, what are the catalogs, we'll discuss about that. So yeah, let's start. Uh, in let's start with the problem which is basically silo mentality or work in silos that that's a very pretty much cool term okay work in silos and we all love to do because we don't have any dependencies so like if i if uh, like when i started my career it was also my you know w because we all want to do all the things by alone right so now in the in our industry if you see there are lot of lot of uh, lot of teams which are solving many problems now there is a there is a you can say many teams which are working the isolation. Now, if you look at the slide, then silo mentally refers to the uh, workplace culture where departments and team function in isolation, and there is less less you know less information or less knowledge about how other team work. Let me give you an, uh, one example. Uh, let's say we have a team. Let's say in uh, let's take an organization that is X, and they have team uh, they have one team which is working on let's say one notification service, and there is another team which is again building that notification service. And they, and they don't have any idea that the service is already there and we don't we can uh, rather than building that service they can also reuse that component but they don't know that is there is a service right so in the industry it often happens that we don't know that there is a service or there is a function still there right so that is what uh, that is something which is the which is currently a problem in the industry now if you break down the these silos if you see in the last slide there are few teams which are working alone and they don't have any idea what what is going in other teams if you take any other uh, you know any other companies like let's say any product based companies and if you, you if you audit the like what are what are the projects in going in this company you can find some duplicacy right so this is the this is you can say this is happening in most of the organizations so this is some issue that we face and there are some reason why the silos are happening now the thing is, in in a very large scale uh, company where you have let's say 10,000 headcount or 20,000 headcount, so it's not really possible that you will have like one person will go and they can sync up everything by their own. It's it's literally a problem, right? So we and one thing we can say that that's that's a employee awareness. So nobody should know that there are thousands of projects going in a team going in organization so we don't literally know that which project is for like which application is for sol solving each which problem so yeah now let's look at this fra fragmented development environment now uh, as I just said that we don't have much knowledge we don't have much knowledge on that how that design is going or how the development is going on and it's scattered across the team lack of standardization now let's say if you if you have uh, let's say if you have something uh, if you have service A service B and service C and there is some team which is duplicating the service D right so in that case we don't have a specific tool from where they can get to know that there is something there, there is some tool which is currently building now that's why it comes to this point that is developer experience or devx now you can uh, call it as developer experience or devx now so what is developer experience 
Now, I think you all guys know because when you are a web developer or in the engineering platform, we mostly focus on the user experience, but we less focus on the developer experience, right? Now, this is, a, this is literally a problem for the developers. Now, if I ask you something, let's say, uh, what would you prefer? If I ask you, get the API and implement it. You have two options. You can go to the project code. You can go to the controller layer. You can see that how the, how the API is written. You can extract the payload from there. Or else, I can give you a swagger. So the best thing is you can go for the swagger, right? So th that is something which is widely implemented. Now, if I, if I need any API docs, I'll just, what I say, I give me the swagger. That is the standard practice for all the organizations. But still, there are few practice which are not, like p developers are not aware of. And documentation, we can say that is one of the thing where we all lack, right? And best practices. So. That is something we what developer experience is, and we mostly foc on, focus on that how we can increase the developer journey. If you look at this life cycle or any SDSC life cycle, we have few phases in the development planning, then we go for like creating all those JIRAs, development, testing, deployment, monitor, all, all these things, right? Now, if I ask you, let's say, as, as I am a developer, I don't know that what's going in the idea phase, and I don't know that how, uh, how monitoring, what is the feedback of the customer. I don't know that how monitoring, uh, like how DevOps team is monitoring, right? So there are a few things which developers are not aware of. And if you see the monitor guy, they have an endpoint, they can see this much of traffic are coming, but they don't know that in which language this project is written, right? So there are some real life problems which exist in almost in all the organizations. Now we, our main goal is to, uh, you know, to streamline all those things together, and to provide a common UI or com common platform for a developer. Now, if you look at the background, uh, as I just said that uh, in the de developer journey, if you look at this thing, this is our day-to-day -day job, and we have it, it mostly cover all the segment. Now, if we come to this, so how we can enhance the developer experience. The first thing is standardization, and simplicity, automate, uh, and we can automate few of the things, secure by design, scale confidence, boost, boost developer productivity. So these are few of the things we have to, these slides, all, all, all these slides are available, so I'm not reading all these points, I'm just going through the overall point of this slide. So there are few practice that we have to perform. Now, one thing that we can say, let's say, let's talk about few of the uh, development practice. Let's say, we, when we, uh, if you look at this thing, uh, uh, let me show you this. Yeah, so standard by design. Now, if I ask you to create a project, so what you will do, you can uh, create a normal node project. You can write NPMI or you can, uh, you can create the project by yourself. So, but in, in a company, there are lots of projects which, which is uh, getting built on Node.js or React. But we don't have a standardized template which is, uh, which is uh, for the entire uh, organization. So there is a lack of that. So every time if I ask you to create a SPA or single page application, you will go, you will, you will create a React app and you will, you will start that, start the practice. But we don't have any specific template for that or you can say scaffolding for that. So these are some things where we can let. Let's say somewhere, uh, someone is using ESLint or someone, uh, someone is using other linting tool, right? So there is no standard practice. Now, so that is where the DevX platform are coming in, coming into. So there are few of the DevX platform. Backstage is one of that. Backstage, ops level, clutch. So these are few uh, developer platform that we can use. So uh, ops level, that is a paid one. Clutch, so that is also a developer platform. And then backstage. So backstage is something that today we'll talk about. Okay, so let's uh, get back to the today's topic that is backstage. Now, your question would be, yeah, these are some problems that we have and we don't really focus because our, as a developer, our main goal is to develop the product. As a uh, DevOps guy, my main job is to monitor the things. As a, let's say, as a t tester, I, my main job is to testing all those things. So we don't really bother about that. We don't need a developer platform, like why we are in this session, right? Now, if you look at the backstage, if you see that we, let's, let's take a problem. 
as a as a developer if we need to integrate a third party things let's say i want to implement a notification service or let's say i want to implement a mass mailing service so i have two option i can build it by my own or i can integrate a third party service so as a developer our first tendency would be i can build it i'll just go and build it so that would be my first tendency but if any service exists how do you know then we cannot if we don't have any con the first thing is we can go to any list and we can ask that is there any platform for that or the time it will take like let's say to get the mail back it will take around one to two days by that time i can write that service right that would be more much more easier for me so as a developer the mentality is just code it or just build it now this is where exactly all this developer platform or idp tools are coming into the uh, coming into the picture so let's talk about the developer tools that is backstage now if you see if you just think of in that direction if you have a platform where we can just search that messaging service notification service and we'll get all the documentations how we can implement at a single place then so it will not like it will just not uh, increase your productivity it will also increase your time right until uh, le let's say if you ask someone in the mail that what is the message service or a notification service it might take some time so it's actually saving your time and cost both now so let's get back to the talk to this topic that is backstage so backstage.io it's a open source framework which was uh, built by spotify and later on it's a part of the cncf now how about now now i was talking about the what is backstage what is the things now just look at this picture we have the backstage and we have few of the things let's say api docs devops ci cd everything at one place now this is something uh, you know as a meme or illustration you can say now key points of the backstage so the first key point that is a uh, centralized software catalog this is this is what exactly i was talking about a specific software ca catalog for all of your software or all of your services now if you look at this point in the software catalog let's say if you have a service or if you have a api we have a lot of metadata in it now it's uh, let's say i have a service okay i ha i have the source code for that i have the tech docs for that i have the release for that i have the ci cd for that there are a lot of components now the first thing you can track everything by yourself in a google doc or something or you can make a platform where let's say someone from other team come to your portal and they they can just check that what are the things you have what are the ci cd you have what are the uh, let's say tech docs you have what is the why do you have the source code why do you have the release everything at one place now this is where the centralized software catalog is coming into the picture a uh, unified inter interface and the one of the most important point that is improved discoverability so this is where most of the organizations are lacking that we don't know that how to discover the stuff uh, we know but there is not no there is not a significant awareness about that streamline documentation i'll come to this part because when i start with the demo then you can see that how we in the backstage how we can streamline the information and yeah in for uh, streamline the documentation and customizable eco ecosystem then let's come to the core components of backstage you can see there are four components one is a uh, software catalog software template then we have search we have documentations and you can see at the end we have plugins so plugins what is plugin what is software catalog what is template what is search i'll talk about now now let's start with the so if i am going just too fast just let me know i'll just take a pause and then like we can continue because we have some limited time uh, software catalog now as i just said that if we okay before going into the software catalog let's look at the backstage architecture basically in backstage if you you will get a centralized ui and you can integrate the plugins like let's say you, you can if you want in a splunk you can integrate a splunk plugin if you want in a kubernetes plugin you can easily integrate that that's a, that's a separate topic so let's just look at this thing currently in this session we'll see that how the service catalog works and what is the specific architecture of that as you can see we have we are getting a ui we have this all these plugins this plugins has a backend and this is the overall architecture about that now let's start with the you know this is a long slide so let's keep it short uh what is the software catalog and uh, let me take you to the software catalog uh this slide yeah so if you look at this slide we have we have few of the services listed over here these are few components and let let me click on the one slide so if you see here let's say we have a playback order that is a service we have the source tech docs at one place if you click on the ci you can see 
where is the CI? If you uh, click on the API, then you can know about the API dependencies, doc, to dos, and what is the relation? Who is the owner? Who was the maintainer? Who was the contributor of the specific project? Now, if you have th thousand services in your system, in your organization, it's not you. Ca you cannot just go to all the teams and just ask for everything, right? So, if you have a single place where you can get all these services, all these CI CD API, then it would be better, right? It will also save you save your time and effort to find the services. Now let's get back to this thing that is software Gladsock. That is a uh, you know un unified inventory management. It also enables transparency uh, using organizations. I have just told you. Then it's basically whatever metadata you have for your service. As I just said that, as you can see, API, all those CI/CD, or I if you have any specific components for that, or any labels or anything, all those metadata you can store it over there. Dependency mapping. If you let's say if you are uh, if you have a webhook service and if you have a service which is as a consuming as a server side event consumer. So from where the source are coming? Is there any multiple source? Or let's say if you have any Kafka consumer or Kaf Kafka producer, what a, what are the dependencies on that? So you can you can map all those things by yourself. Now, yeah, let's come to this portion. I'll also show you all these things in demo. I'm just uh, moving a bit quickly because I have to show you the demos as well. Uh, software templates. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, let's say if you have, if, you, if I ask you to create a uh, React file, what you will do, you will just uh, npm run uh, create React app and it, it will just create that React app. Or what you can do if you have a standardized practice for your platform. Well, let's say if you are creating a scaffolding for that, where you have all the best practices written over there. So you can just clone that. Uh, you can just flesh that template, and you can uh, you just you can just work on that specific template. So this templating is one of the important thing that we have in the backstage. So you can see these are some demo template. I'll also show you show you the uh, show you the demo on this DevCon Re React app scaffolding that how you can fetch this template and publish this in your into your GitHub. Documentation uh, for the documentation you can see. Let's say you have. Uh, in, in two way you can do is one is like if you have any source of source of truth or SOC any link you can just di directly integrate all those things in the backstage but you have to make sure that these things are in markdown format you can you can write some converter for that you can convert your like docs from SOT to markdown file or what you can do if you have any tech docs in github you can just directly integrate all those things in the backstage document it will just you can if you go to the specific service you can show all those documentations for that now Let's come to the search. Search is one of the thing which makes uh, backstage powerful. Now, if I if I ask you to, there is one thing we can do. We can we there is one thing we can do in the search that you, if you're using Solar or Elastic, you have to index all those things. But here in the backstage, you don't need to uh, you don't need to index or something, right? Whatever you have in the components, backstage components, all those things will be auto indexed. So in the backstage, you will get a unified search. You, whatever you have in the platform, you just search it. You will get all the related stuff. So which makes these things more powerful. Now let's talk about the plugins. If you now, whatever I have said, those things are about more of in an organization level that how we, we can discover the service, how we can discover the metadata, API key document, documentation, CI, CD. Now let's talk about the plugin. Let's say if you, ha if you also integrate this backstage with Jira, let's whatever things are going on Jira, or let's say you want to see, you don't want to every time log into the Kubernetes dashboard or mini, mini cube dashboard. You want all these things in a, in a specific place, or you don't need to uh, log into like EKS or something. So what you can do, you can create the plugins for that. In the backstage only, you can monitor your stuff. Let's say it has the plugins for Kubernetes and whatever, like mostly for the uh, you know the applications which we use in the re real life. Let's say if, if you want to integrate Splunk or Kubernetes, you can integrate the things from the plugin. So I'll also refer you something where you can learn about how plugins works. Now benefits. So as it's a developer tool, it's mostly for the developer benefits. So because I think I have already discussed about this thing: centralized information, standardized development, and faster development, because it will help you to save your times. 
and it's also uh, it's also benefit for it. It will benefit the engineering man manager as well because it improves the visibility and it enforces the standard practices throughout the organizations. Now, if you want to, you know, develop the Braxis plugin or all those components, so these are few technologies that you have to learn. So, as you can see in the front end, we need uh, React, Material UI. In back end, we need Node. L in the language, TypeScript, JavaScript. So, these are few things. Yeah, now let's set up the backstage application. I'll quickly go through the demo. If you want to set up the backstage application, that is very easy. You can just uh, go to your terminal, run npm backstage create app at the rate latest. So it will, if you run this, you can uh, run the like backstage framework in your system. The t primarily it will look like this. So let's create a template in the backstage. Now. This is the today's uh, demo that what we'll do, we'll create a template in the backstage and we'll publish that. So let's see how it works. Uh, let me go through the get, let me go through the GitHub repository. Uh, just a minute. Where is it? Just give me two minutes for that. Yeah, so when you are creating the template, you have to, let's say if you have a skeleton, or let's say if you have, a, let's say if you have a specific spec scaffolding. Now we'll see that how we can integrate the scaffolding in the backstage, and later on how we can publish it. So as you can see, we have a scaffolding over here in the skeleton folder, and this is the template that you have to write. Okay, so these are some things which are already available in the backstage. You can take the leverage of that, or I'll also make this repository available. So you can just clone this repository and customize it by your own. Uh, let me run the backstage instance one. Uh, it's already running. So this is the backstage instance, and here you can see currently we don't have any template. So our first job would be uh, our first job will be to integrate the templates. Now how we can integrate templates, if you see, if you go to my repository, here we have uh, these files, this is the scaffolding, this is the template.yml, uh, here you have to write this template, then you, we have the tags over here, react, white, github, ci template, and these are some steps that you have to write. The first thing is this, uh, here in this demo we'll show that how we can fetch the template and how we can publish the template. So th we have written the first step that will fetch the template. It will store that in the backstage. Then it will publish the template. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, which uh, where we have the practice. Let's say, uh, oh sorry, just repeat your question. I have to repeat this over here. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Yes. No, you don't need any GitHub actions for that. So when you run the back, when when you integrate the backstage, so this is a basic. Okay. So you you are talking about this copy without rendering dot GitHub workflows. Okay. This 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 actions right. Yes, these are some steps which will be like, you know, when we, when we run the backstage, so these are basically for the backstage, not for the GitHub actions. So we have written it in the GitHub. So if you have the, these things in local, that will also work. So do we need to write, uh, design this pipeline or will it be there? Yeah, so if you, if you need this template, you can copy it from the backstage. So you don't need to explicitly write all those things. And your question was that why it will uh, why it will run in the GitHub Actions or something else? So it will run within the backstage only. Is this fetch you can see this action fetch dot template? These are like backstage thing. Okay. So uh, is it is it uh, like is it your you got the answer? So. Okay. Sure. I'll I'll get back to you after the session. Okay, so publish, then we'll publish the actions here in Gitla GitHub. You can also publish it in GitLab or something if you have any other uh, VCS. Then register, I have just uh, committed this part. Uh, what we have to do to register this template, uh, 
you you can the you can do two two things in the you have to come to this app dot config yaml then you can do two things you can uh, copy it from the file right you can create a file for that or you can directly uh, clone this from the github actually like from the github or the source repository so here we are cloning this template.yml or you know fetching this template.yml where we have all the configurations for the template.yml correct now this is not specifically related to the github actions now what happened if we restart our system uh, let me restart my system just a minute if you see currently here we don't have yes yes yeah correct uh, just a minute if we go to create uh, then you can see we have the we have the uh, currently we have this template over here so what we have to do now we had two steps one is fetch and another one is publish the actions you were talking about so yeah if we click on choose the first thing it will fetch and then it will publish uh, let me write the application name let's say devconf then application path let's say that is also devconf uh, next then owner so i'll use my other github account uh, let me write this uh, repository let's say demo at devconf cz review so when i click on the create what it will do the scaffolding we had over here it will uh, publish the same scaffolding in my repository okay so let me create click on the create if you see we have the react app, app scaffolding uh, i think there is one issue repository not found just a minute uh, uh, let me check i have uh, just a minute test test uh, github uh, test just give me two minutes test two Yeah, you can see I, I, it's already published and it won't show over here because I have another GitHub account of. Yeah, yes. So let me run it over here. And you can see we have just published our repository that is test2. And whatever we had in the scaffolding over here, uh, we have the same thing. Let's see if you go to the scaffolding, we have all the uh, basic templates. This is created on white white config dot yaml packages this and this is a very basic template you can customize the template by your own so yeah this is the test two repository so this is how you can take the leverage of the uh, templates uh, backstage templates and this is this is just a you know tip of an iceberg so there are a lot of things if you want to let's say here we have the metadata for this uh, we have the metadata over here this is the red, uh, readme uh, let me show you a proper readme just a minute uh, where was my just a minute uh, uh, let's say we have a proper readme over here you can see if you want to integrate this readme you can just uh, take the link and you, you can integrate it with, with it with the service catalog or in the documentation in the documentation you can find all those things over here and if you have any other source of truth you can also integrate it so yeah that that is about how we can pub yeah uh, why sorry could you please go again why, why yeah yeah right correct so now let me get back to this i think we have discussed about that how backstage works how we can take the leverage of these backstage templates and same thing if you go to the docs and let me show you the search uh, i think it has encounters few issues in my system so in just a minute uh, let's say let's search graphql you can see all these things are in index and whatever you have in the components it will show all the things now it will not show the things let's say in the plugin you have something some data in your third party application it don't show that but whatever you have within the instance it will show everything so yeah that's that is about the uh, backstage template and this is not uh, like i have mostly this uh, yeah as you can see we have the template over here i'll also make this slide available you can uh, you can go over there and you can 
uh, checked my slides. And here, as I just said that you have to put all those things in the app config.yml. Now you can tell me one thing that I don't need. I ha I have a I I need a dynamic template. So every time I will go to the app app.config and I'll uh, add all these things. So for these things, you can uh, use the you can configure your database. Let's say Postgres uh, Postgres. Then it will just put the thing over there. So every time you don't need to statically type all these things. So yeah, this is how you can register a template. I have already shown you. So choose your template, how you can publish it. So yeah, review your template inputs. Template is published. Now, yeah. So yeah, that is all from my end. F uh, in the backstage, if you have any question, you can ask me. We have around five minutes time. So yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, if you want more reference about that, if you want to use any like specific uh, backstage instance for Red Hat, so you can uh, check this uh, developers.redhat.com slash rhdh. Or if you want the, the vanilla one, you can go to backstage.io. You can use the vanilla thing for the uh, backstage. So I think I had a lot of slide to cover. That's why I was, <laughs> I was uh, going too fast, because we have the limited time. Now. Yeah, if you want the slide with all the steps, you can take a snap of it and you can go to bitlead of devcount hyphen backstage. Then you can get the slide from there. And if you have any questions, you can like come to me or raise any, uh, raise any, you know, raise any issues or something. Okay. So that is what I wanted to say. I hope you like the session. And if you want to connect me, you can connect me in any of my handles. So yeah, that is all about me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for like. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining the session. Thank you so much. Thank you.